because I'm super excited to see this. Such a long time coming. Please welcome former NASA astronauts, Dr. May Jamison and Captain Scott Kelly. The hype for this has been absolutely incredible, so let's see what Good evening everyone. What they're gonna do for I'm us. I'm Dr. May Jemison, an engineer, educator, physician, former astronaut. And on this very day in 1969, the crew of Apollo 11 was approximately 176,000 nautical miles from Earth. They were traveling at a speed of 3,200 feet per second to the moon. To put that speed into perspective, your travel time from the Los Angeles airport, which is approximately 32 miles away, would be 53 seconds. And less than 48 hours from right now, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the day three courageous men embarked on a journey from the Earth to a truly uncharted place, carrying with them the hopes and determination of thousands of women and men who conceived, designed, engineered, built, and supported the endeavor. And buoyed by the goodwill and the imagination of people around the world, they landed safely on the moon. This successful mission forced millions of people to redefine the idea of what was possible. But you see, as a young girl growing up on the south side of Chicago, I knew chapter and verse of the Gemini and the Apollo missions, the engineering sequence to get humans to the moon. I was excited about space, science, and exploration. I like dinosaurs too, right? Space and dinosaurs. <laughs> but my seventh grade teacher told me to consider becoming an aerospace engineer because they're the ones who build spaceships. You know, popular television shows like The Jetsons, Lost in Space, and of course my favorite, Star Trek, they started people to thinking about space. And in a way, real life space exploration fueled science fiction, and science fiction fueled real life space. I'm Scott Kelly, retired U.S. Navy captain and former NASA astronaut. As a five year old boy, I, wa I too watched the Apollo 11 mission on television and was in awe. It's one of my earliest and most vivid memories. Then at the age of 18, I read the book, The Right Stuff by Tom Wolfe, an amazing story that chronicles the first 15 years of America's space program. The book defined my destiny. I knew right then and there the next step to becoming an astronaut was to first get an engineering degree then become a fighter pilot and later a test pilot. Eventually piloting and then commanding the U.S. space shuttle, twice launching on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft, and living on the International Space Station for nearly a year. Where for me, truly, dreams come true. And they were made possible because of the brave and talented aviators, designers, engineers, and others who worked on the space programs before me. The quest to land a human on the moon and bring them back safely to Earth required thinking that wasn't merely out of the box. For most people, it seemed outside the realm of possibility. The scientific, engineering, and creative thinking that led to Apollo 11's success would foster other scientific discoveries and technologies that have benefited us right here on Earth and they propel us further into space. Every innovation builds on the one before it. While in space, as we orbited the Earth, I saw my hometown of Chicago. And more importantly, on this space laboratory, I worked on 43 life science and materials experiments, semiconductor processing, frog embryology. And as a physician, the experiments to understand First, the effects of weightlessness on the human body and how to counteract them was key. Because, of course, all of this 
helped us to prepare for extended duration human flight. In fact, the purpose of my most recent 340-day mission was to study these long-term effects of extended space flight on a human guinea pig, <laughs> yours truly, in an effort to better prepare us for future trips to Mars and beyond. Bad stuff happens to our physiology while we're in space. We lose bone and muscle. Our immune systems are degraded. There are vision effects, even changes to our, our DNA. In fact, 7% of my gene expression changed during my year-long mission. And as far as I'm told, hasn't changed back. Not exactly sure what that means, but I hope it's a good thing. NASA researchers benefited from conducting tests on both me and my identical twin brother, Mark, also a former NASA astronaut who remained right here on Earth. And the results were reassuring. While in space, the human body adapted to the extreme environment of space. But make no mistake, there is still much more to learn. And Scott, for me, that's what's so exciting about space exploration. It's learning and purposefully expanding beyond what we know how to do. Similar out-of-the-box thinking that 50 years ago made the Apollo 11 mission a success, it's now being applied to map the boundaries of human interstellar flight within the next 100 years. And once again, all along the way, these scientific discoveries and technological advances will enhance life on Earth. As a principal of 100-year Starship Initiative, our main objective is to be sure that the yet undiscovered capabilities for human interstellar flight, that is going beyond our solar system to another star, that those capabilities exist within the next 100 years. The truth is, we believe pursuing an extraordinary tomorrow creates a better world today. When many of those that push these boundaries of possibility return to Earth, they piloted a much different craft the iconic Chevrolet Corvette. Corvettes. Corvettes and astronauts have long been linked. Pilots like high performance, precise and safe modes of transportation. And of course, they've gotta be fast. And like a rocket, the Corvette you're about to see has the engine in the back. Like many people here and uh, watching around the world, I'm a huge fan, having owned two different generations of the Corvette myself. And tonight we're here to celebrate an important milestone in U.S. and automotive history. Here to tell you more is someone who knows a thing or two about Corvettes. Please welcome GM Executive Vice President and President of the Americas, Barry Engel. Captain Kelly and, and Dr. Jemison, thank you. Thank you for being, being here with us tonight. Thank you for sharing your personal insights into what it takes to overcome challenges, to push the boundaries, and do what no one has ever done before. It's really a true honor to, to hear your stories. You know, as Captain Kelly said, astronauts and Corvettes have been linked since the very beginning of the space program, when Alan Shepard reported for training in April of 1959, driving his 1957 Corvette. Shepard would go on to own at least 10 Corvettes in his lifetime. Several of the other adventurous and dedicated young men who trained with him to become America's first astronauts also shared his enthusiasm for sports cars. Shortly after Shepard became the first American in space, General Motors executive Ed Cole presented the astronaut with a new white 1962 Corvette. The car had been outfitted by GM designers with a customized space age interior. This early Corvette astronaut connection, which began with Shepard, might have faded in the years that followed, if not for Florida Chevrolet dealer Jim Rathman. Rath 
Hoffman was a race car driver who, after winning the 1960 Indianapolis 500, opened a Chevrolet Cadillac dealership in Melbourne, Florida, near the Space Center. He negotiated a special program with GM to get astronauts into Chevrolet cars. Many of the Mercury and Apollo astronauts took Rathman up on his Corvette offer. Two-lane blacktop duels fought between Shepard and astronaut Virgil Gus Grissom in their big block powered Corvettes would truly become the stuff of legend. In his quest for a competitive edge, Grissom had his last Corvette, a 1967 convertible, specially geared and modified for accepting extra wide rear racing tires. When Apollo 12 astronauts Dick Gordon, Charles Conrad, and Alan Bean ordered new 1969 Corvettes, they asked that the identically equipped 427 Stingray Coupes be custom finished in a special black accented Riverside Gold color scheme that was designed by Bean himself. Corvette gained huge exposure when it famously appeared in the June 1971 issue of Life magazine. Apollo 15 Lunar Mission crew members Jim Irwin, Al Warden, and Dave Scott have been photographed with their Corvettes in a trainee version of the first lunar rover vehicle, or moon buggy, which they would deliver to the moon. The Apollo 15 crew members, their Corvettes were each a different color, red, white, and blue. Dual racing stripes on each car completed the colors of the American flag. Almost everyone has a story of the first time they saw a Corvette. I remember like it was yesterday. I was a little kid and the neighbor across the street had a son who would occasionally come to visit. And the son, he rolled in style. He drove an early C3. It must have been about a 68 or a 69. It was one like the Apollo pioneers drove. My dad, he always liked cars and the Corvette caught his attention. But I didn't need dad to tell me it was cool. Even as a young kid, I could tell that Stingray with rally wheels and a rumbling V8 was really something special. Corvette is truly an American icon. No other sports car nameplate has been roaming the streets or dominating the tracks as long as Corvette. After 66 years and seven generations, Chevrolet's Corvette has garnered a passionate global family. And many of them are here tonight or watching around the world. From all of us at Chevrolet, thank you for joining us for this milestone event. Now, I could literally spend the entire show listing the thousands of Corvette's achievements. But first, there isn't enough time. And second, I'm sure I'd miss something that would cause a, a fantastic and passionate debate. It is this passion for Corvette that unites our fans and our customers. The same passion drives our designers, our engineers, our suppliers, and of course, the entire manufacturing team here in the U.S., specifically in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where we proudly build this great car. And that passion, it started on day one. January 17, 1953, Chevrolet revealed the Corvette dream car at New York's Waldorf or Astoria Hotel as part of GM's traveling auto show known as Autorama. Autorama. Not even the founding fathers of Corvette, designer Harley Earl, architect of the V8 engine Ed Cole, or the young Belgian-born engineer Zora Arcus Duntov, none of them could have imagined the automotive legend they were launching. With more than 1.7 million produced, the Corvette has long been the crown jewel of Chevrolet. It has always represented Chevrolet's best in design, performance, and technology, all at a great value. Like their kindred spirits who made aviation and space exploration possible, 
Our designers and engineers have been similarly inspired by every generation of Corvette to push the technical limits of propulsion, materials, precision engineering, design, and aerodynamics. We have not only pushed the envelope on our production cars, but we have been working behind the scenes for decades to design and engineer mid-engine research vehicles that pushed even further, all in preparation for this moment. Earlier, Scott and Meg outlined the importance of creatively blending engineering and design to make great things happen, and the importance of focusing on every detail. The next generation Corvette is not just about imaginative breakthrough engineering or breathtaking design. It's about both. And it's about every detail reimagined. What you're about to see is a milestone achievement for GM, for Chevrolet, and for Corvette. This car is a powerful testament to the creativity, imagination, discipline, and perseverance of the men and women who had the courage to dream and journey to places where few, if any, have ever gone before. Ladies and gentlemen, the all-new 2020 mid-engine Corvette. I'm moving my picture so we don't miss any of this awesomeness. Guys, what do you think about that? It looks just just as expected for the prototypes that have been shared. And um, you know, I've seen a prototype that looked very similar to this back from the uh, the eighties. Um, you know, photos and stuff of it at the Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Please welcome the president of General Motors. That's Sean. Mark Royce. That is that's cool. I wonder if it was going to have the Lambo doors oh, on it, but man. this this one doesn't. This is the day. That's well, good finally, looking here it is, I ladies and gentlemen. Color. What do you think? I think I speak for a lot of us here when I say it's hard to believe this is really actually happening. Before I tell you about the car, I have to say that we are all incredibly thrilled and honored by the presence of the true American heroes that kicked off our show tonight. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I mean, I was a little kid, and watching these raining images, I was completely blown away by the moon landing, and the lunar lander, and the man walking on the moon. And we were all thinking, this country is the best. 
I built an incredibly detailed model of the Apollo Lunar Module. When I was finished, it felt like the coolest thing I'd ever done. I built many other model rockets after that, like the, the kind you can launch right in your backyard, but that's a different story for a different day. Today, it is almost impossible to think that it's been 50 years this week since the Apollo 11 landing. 50 years. After all those years, here I am at the launch of another engineering marvel, another one that blows my mind, makes my spine tingle, that makes me proud to be an American, and that makes me want to build things. Appropriately, for a vehicle that's been an American icon since 1953, the new generation represents one giant leap for Corvette. The 2020 Chevrolet Corvette is, true to the vision of creator Zora Arcus Duntoff, a mid-engine supercar. The C8 is everything Zora dreamed of with technology he never could have imagined. For me personally, seeing the Corvette and meeting Zora for the first time all traced back to growing up in this great business. On many weekend afternoons, my dad took me to work with him at the GM Tech Center in Warren, Michigan, specifically the Chevrolet Engineering Building where the Corvette came to life. I spent many of those rides to Warren hunched in the rear flat area of Corvette Coupes. On the way home, they would take me by the GM Research Building lobby to see the Firebirds in the original Silver Stingray. I just loved everything about it. And they used to have a swap meet in Warren down the road from the GM Tech Center where they'd sell Chevrolet heads and parts and all kinds of stuff. On one of those weekend trips to work when I was about 10, I begged my dad to stop at the swap meet so we could check it out, and he did. We go inside the huge warehouse-like building to look around, and there's Zora. I'd never seen him before, but you could tell right away that he was someone special. He was sitting there holding court, signing all kinds of things for all kinds of people, and it was just so cool, such a great moment. It all contributed to the aura of Corvette for me and reinforced what I already knew I wanted to do with my life. That's why it's so special and so exciting for me to be up here on this stage with this car. This car, the all-new 2020 Corvette, is one that changes everything. With every succeeding generation since 1953, Chevrolet has worked hard to make Corvette better and better. We've never stopped Proving, never stopped innovating, and never stopped making the car faster, better handling, more comfortable, more everything. You can make the case that once we got to C7, right, we I'm had pushed the limits of what we could do in that configuration. Horrible. It was as close to perfection as front engine rear drive Corvette was going to get. To take performance and driving dynamics to the next level for our customers, we had to move to mid-engine. And that's what Zora had always wanted, of course. In 1959, exactly 60 years ago, Zora and his team went to work on developing Chevrolet Engineering Research Vehicle Number 1, commonly known as CERV-1. CERV-1, which made its debut in 1960, was a demonstration of what happens when you push the boundaries of engineering and design to develop a mid-engine race car. What made CERV-1 so unique was how light and powerful it really was. The car only weighed 1,600 pounds, and the body accounted for 80 pounds of that. The 283 cubic inch NPA powered the CERV-1, produced 350 horsepower, and weighed only 350 pounds, thanks to the then novel use of aluminum in the cylinder block and heads, and several other critical parts like the water pump and the flywheel. Zora's team also used magnesium in the clutch housing and fuel injection manifold, and it also featured mechanical fuel injection. But my favorite aspect of CERV-1, and it's probably yours too, if you've ever seen it run, you can actually see flames coming out of the back of it, and it is just unreal. So CERV-1 was followed by what I think is most, the most beautiful of all the CERV vehicles, CERV-2, in 1964. The CERV-2 was an amazing car built to compete against the Ford GTs at Le Mans. It had a monocoque chassis, a 377 cubic inch V8 producing 500 horsepower. Importantly, CERV-2 was, in fact, all-wheel drive. 
The transmission featured a unique configuration in which the rear wheels were driven by one torque converter and the front wheels through another in the front. Zora patented this configuration in 1968. Serve 2 also marked the beginning of the velocity stacks, like the McLaren's had, which were developed, in fact, by General Motors R&D, and that car is very, very special in my opinion. And in 1990, the Serve 3 made its debut. I was already working at the company, so I remember it being built around the time we were spending a lot of time at the GM Proving Ground working on sort of the holy grail of a true active uh, suspension system. Serve 3 did have that yaw control and kept it stable through the active suspension, and it had active aero and other advanced technology on it. Like its predecessor, it had an all-wheel drive mid-engine configuration. And it was powered by a turbocharged ZR1 5.7 V8, producing 650 horsepower, and it weighed only 3,400 pounds thanks to extensive use of carbon fiber, and the central structure was in fact a carbon fiber torque tube that weighed only 38 pounds. The ends of that beam were machined from titanium. Those three SIR vehicles and their legacy are very much the inspiration for this new first ever mid-engine 2020 Corvette Stingray. They show what Corvette has always been about for Chevrolet and GM, pushing the boundaries of innovation in terms of propulsion, material usage, and performance. Now, just as Corvette has been a halo for Chevrolet and the brand, these serve cars were a halo for GM R&D, pushing the company to greater innovation and to new heights. They also serve to show that mid-engine has always been a part of Corvette's destiny and it's something we've been looking at for a very, very long time. All along, it has been absolutely paramount that we keep Corvette true to its roots of attainable performance. Mid-engine has historically posed a challenge to this mission. Not so anymore. The time has come today, and we feel that both Corvette traditionalists and potential new customers will embrace the change in layout especially once they see it and drive it. They'll think it's flat out the best Corvette they've ever driven, and that will be because it's the best Corvette anybody's driven. There are many reasons for that, even beyond the mid-engine layout, like the way it feels, the way it sounds, the way it looks, and the incredible attention to every detail on the car. And that's what we're going to dive into now with Phil and then Taj. So please join me in welcoming the Executive Design Director of Global Chevrolet, Mr. Phil Zack. Phil? Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Uh, at GM, every time we take on the task of designing a new Corvette, it must build on its storied history and push towards the future. The current seventh generation Corvette and each one before it had a strong and powerful presence. But the new mid-engine eclipses anything we've ever done before. This is not merely a new chapter in the Corvette legacy, this is an all new book. But before I continue, I want to acknowledge the true design talent that really brought this mid-engine Corvette to life, as well as generations prior. John Cafaro, former Chevrolet Executive Desi uh, Director of Design. John, you in the audience? There you go. And also Tom Peters, former Corvette chief designer. Tom, please stand. <laughs> now, both John and Tom have recently retired from GM, but they're here with us tonight to share this moment. Uh, their legacy and talent will forever live on with Chevrolet and into the future with this new stunning 2020 Stingray. Uh, I hope you'd all agree with us. Sure. <laughs> now Chevrolet has always been a symphony of performance, design, and engineering. But on this car, every element has been elevated to the next level of craftsmanship. The Stingray's exterior is a powerful, bold, futuristic design statement with exotic proportions, a wider stance, but still unmistakably Corvette. You can see the continued influence of aircraft design 
lean and muscular with sculpted shapes, conveying a sense of motion even while standing still. With the new kept forward driving position and rear engine location, the proportions become the essence of a jet fighter for the road. As you would have expected, we've maintained some of the essential Corvette design cues that are timeless and transitioned well into this new mid-engine configuration. For example, the bold front face with LED lights and aggressive dual element DRL signature proudly say Corvette. The strong fender peaks over the front wheel and rear quarter give the Corvette the expected athletic muscular appearance. The sleek sculptor is low, taunt, and narrow driven. And the horizontal crease down the body side is the main design element that gives Corvette its sleek appearance and anchors the fender shapes and aggressive side intake. The purity of this feature is so significant that we hid the door handle releases underneath the side intake to keep them clean and uninterrupted looking. It's clean. Now as you move to the rear of the car, the dual element tail lamps are uniquely Corvette with an enhanced three-dimensional execution. With the wide lamp about location the tail lights. and the lower dual exhaust tips, the rear stance exudes the performance attributes of a true exotic. Now the design challenges for this mid-engine Corvette were unique in that everything had to be changed. But at the same time, our mission was to make the finished product not just unmistakably Corvette, but an exotic supercar version of a Corvette. By repositioning the engine to the middle, the proportions shift, and the whole canopy is thrust forward in profile, allowing the rear wheels to move farther back for a much more aggressive attitude. The mid-engine design allows for a more forward feel in terms of driving position and visibility. You're actually leading the way as you drive. Additionally, having the motor behind you communicates a supercar feel, which intensifies the overall driving experience. The new location of the engine is truly the focal point for the car's design. It's the heart of this new Corvette, and it sits like a jewel in a showcase. A jewel in a showcase that is visible through the large hatch rear window. Now, every visual surface on this component uh, received unprecedented attention, including the meticulously designed engine and underhood compartment. Yeah. Diving into the detail execution of the car, the design team found inspiration in high-end motorcycles and race car components. We sought to optimize the appearance of every wire, tube, component routing, fastener, and finish. We took the panels off and spent countless hours developing the engine compartment, right down to all the mechanical fasteners. The intake manifold covers were completely redesigned, and a Corvette emblem was added for additional now, the exterior statement is bold, fresh, and fully capable, reflecting what we have learned from past Corvettes and from racing. For the new Stingray, we completely redesigned its cooling and airflow. We looked at drag, lift, how to achieve the ultimate balance with this new mid-engine configuration while maintaining the design integrity. All the surfaces are pulled taut as possible over the mechanicals, giving the car a dynamic energy that visually draws people to. Now, what you see on stage is the Z51 package. We've had this unique track package for Stinger in the past, and this one offers customers even more. As you can see, it has an, an uh, aggressive front splitter and an open air rear spoiler. Our designers worked hand in hand with the air engineers to give a whole new meaning to the term form follows function. Now, Tad will touch on this a little bit more uh, in his presentation. Uh, now, the mid-engine configuration not only enables a stunning exterior, but also improves interior accommodations. With the engine behind the driver, the cowl and the instrument panel are lowered. The entire occupant package is moved forward 16 and a half inches, improving visibility. The driver compartment is also larger than the previous generation, offering more space and an inch more seat travel. With this new mid-engine exotic exterior, we had to deliver an inspiring interior to match. The most important is the driver-centric cockpit, which features a new 
squared off two spoke steering wheel that leaves an unobstructed view of the 12 inch reconfigurable cluster display. The square steering wheel shaped and low two spoke configuration enable a full nine and three hand grip position during hard cornering. The compressed shape also allows for better visibility and more legroom. In the cockpit, the controls are literally wrapped around you in all directions. It reflects a car that is all about catering to the driver's experience. You'll notice that the only knob on the auto system is the volume control, and that's because it's the most frequently used. Every other button had to earn its place. The single line of climate control buttons on the console are intuitively laid out and minimized. The instrument panel's wings extend from the driver's console and wrap around the IP, freeing up space. This same less is more philosophy has also been incorporated into the unique ultra-thin airbags. The look is simple and clean and help us keep the instrument panel low for great forward visibility. Now we will offer three seat options, a GT1, a GT2, and a competition sport for drivers seeking the right balance of comfort and style. We now offer six interior color themes, more than ever before, which also includes more personal choices on material selection and stitching. The interior stitching is also larger and more pronounced. It highlights the handcrafted quality and attention to detail. Even the seat belts get an expanded and expressive color palette, an optional six. We've also expanded the exterior color palette to 12, more than we've ever offered previously. Now everything on the interior is authentic and most, pads are most parts are wrapped in leather or suede. The buttons are aluminum. Carbon fiber is used throughout for lightweight performance and visual appeal. Now all of these details are what makes this 2020 mid-engine Stingray special. From the moment customers walk up to see the car, open the door, we want to surprise them and let them discover something they weren't expecting. We want them to say, this can only be a Corvette, but also say it feels like no Corvette ever. But none of this great design would be much without the performance, the packaging, and the total livability of this mid-engine sports car. All made possible by our incredible engineering team, led by Corvette Executive Chief Engineer, Tad Stricter. Thank you, Tad. What a night. It's been a long time coming. Um, it's great to see everybody's faces out here. You know, we have great relationships with our customers. I'm so glad uh, you all came out with us. Uh, what a venue. Fantastic venue. It's so large it was actually raining up here. You guys didn't feel it out there. Mark turned the wipers on, but stopped raining, so we're, we're putting those away. Uh, uh, thank you, Phil, and uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to add my thanks uh, to Scott and May for inspiring us and generations to come. As Mark said, this is the right time to move to mid-engine. We've actually known for quite a while we are reaching the limits of performance in a front-engine configuration. Of course, just expanding the performance envelope wasn't the only challenge we faced. Corvette also has to be beautiful, functional, and attainable. And it has to fit into our customers' lives as naturally and completely as our front-engine cars do. Our mission was to develop a new sports car that combines all of the things we do really well today with the performance and driving experience of mid-engine supercars. All while meeting requirements from all around the globe, including right-hand drive markets. That was news right there. To do this, we had to develop the analytical tools and knowledge necessary to engineer a world-class mid-engine car on our very first attempt. State-of-the-art computer models and simulation let us synthesize and integrate new solutions for body structure, aerodynamics, thermal management, crashworthiness, and others. These images behind me depict some of the simulation work we 
done. And we're going beyond that tonight, as you've already seen, using augmented reality. Let me explain some of the physics behind why putting the engine behind the driver enables us to make a quantum leap forward in driving dynamics. A mid-engine architecture allows for a very short, straight, stiff steering system. It's 50% stiffer than today's car. And that makes the driver's input to the chassis nearly instantaneous. The new seating position places the occupant's center of gravity right on top of the vehicle's center of gravity, so the car literally rotates around you in a turn. It completely changes the perception of vehicle handling and responsiveness. It also allows us to engineer higher performance chassis calibrations while simultaneously improving ride quality. Historically, cars with rear weight bias struggle to get to neutral and progressive vehicle handling. We were determined to get all the benefits of that weight distribution without any of the drawbacks. We did that by putting untold hours into the design of suspension geometry, bushing compliances, tire construction, and the front to rear stagger of the wheel sizes. There's actually a lot more than that to it, but I can tell you the final result is magic. The driving dynamics of this vehicle are better than we thought they would be. Today's car, today's Corvette, gets excellent marks for ride and handling balance, but the Stingray is a whole new deal. No Corvette has ever felt so comfortable, nimble, and so completely stable. I can't talk about the suspension without talking about its foundation, the body structure. The main structure is aluminum and makes the most use of high pressure die casting in General Motors history. The six largest castings are enormous. These high pressure die cast precision parts have superior material properties, more design flexibility than traditional castings. They are used throughout the car to minimize the number of joints and put the material exactly where it needs to be for maximum stiffness and minimum mass. They are the key to making this the stiffest Corvette in history, which in turn contributes to great driving dynamics. We've been using a center backbone strategy since 1997, but for the 2020 Stingray, it has been completely redesigned for a mid-engine configuration. In addition to great structural feel, customers will notice very low rockers, which allow for easy entrance and exit, compared to other mid-engine uh, designs featuring a tub-type construction. Beyond aluminum, we're using many innovative materials in many strategic places. Corvette has always been a mosaic of premium materials, and this one's no different. We pick the material that optimizes the performance of each component. On a mid-engine car, you would expect there to be a front storage compartment, but the Corvette also features a rear storage compartment. Both of these compartments and the dash panel are molded from ultra-lightweight fiberglass with a proprietary resin. It's so light that actually a solid brick of it will float in water. This is a real first, a real breakthrough. It helps manage the Corvette's overall weight while maximizing luggage volume and resisting elevated temperatures. And speaking of those two luggage compartments, we felt it was hugely important to maintain our class leading utility. Combined, these two compartments provide unprecedented luggage volume. The trunk easily accommodates the standard removable roof panel, which has been a hallmark in Corvette since 1984, yeah. or two golf bags. In fact, even the five-piece luggage set that we custom designed to completely fill the back of the current car fits perfectly in this new car. Protecting that rear trunk, we have the automotive world's first curved, protruded carbon fiber bumper beam. This is the lightest and strongest possible structure for this very important part of the car. Although luggage room is not at the top of most sports car customers' reason to purchase, we know it improves the car's bandwidth. What I mean by that, it does a lot of things well. Of course, we want the Corvette to be an amazing track weapon. We also want it to shine as a daily driver and as a long-distance touring machine. Another way we expand bandwidth is through customizable driver modes. The four familiar driver modes we introduced on the current Corvette return for 2020, weather, tour, sport, 
and track. Customers will find even more vehicle characteristics involved in tailoring the driving experience in each mode. New for this generation, we have what we call C mode. C mode lets you customize every vehicle attribute we offer and make it accessible with the single push of a button. So for example, if you like a certain setup for a particular track, instead of wading through menus every time you head for pit lane, you hit the Z, but Z mode button and off you go. As Phil mentioned, the new Stingray will have the Z51 package. It includes a long list of track focused features like performance tires, larger brakes, electronic limited slip differential, more aggressive gearing in the transmission, additional cooling capacity, and aerodynamic content. The aero content includes additional brake cooling and a front splitter and rear spoiler that actually create full vehicle downforce and confidence-inspiring balance on the track. With more weight on the rear axle, the electronic limited slip differential is more effective than ever, giving the Stingray the optimum handling balance through every corner and the ability to put power down like never before on corner exit. The available performance traction management has been refined for greater acceleration and more consistency across a wider range of surface conditions. I'm just scratching the surface of what this vehicle does, can do, and will do. Many of our features are enabled by our new digital vehicle platform. This new electrical architecture sends signals much faster, provides state-of-the-art cybersecurity and over-the-air reflash capability. We are introducing our second generation of the performance data recorder, which will now have a database of track start finish lines. You'll be able to do point to point recordings and can even be set to auto record like a dash cam. Of course, all the video is high definition. Other features include a 14 speaker Bose performance series audio system, the highest level we've ever done, and a rear camera mirror, where we put the camera on the roof so it's high and forward so you can better monitor your blind spots. There's even a front lift system capable of raising the nose up to two inches. You guys know we talk to our customers. But that front lift system is actually GPS enabled. Every time you lift the nose, it will ask you, do you want this one memorized? And if it's one you use often, wow. all you have to do is hit a single button, say yes. It will memorize that in up to a thousand places. Wow. That's incredible. Every time you approach, it'll automatically lift. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Uh, you've probably been waiting to hear about the drive lines, the performance yes. stuff. I'll talk about the beating heart of the Corvette, the engine. In a world quickly migrating to forced induction, small displacement engines, we are bucking the trend and continuing to advance the development of our famous small block V8. Yeah. There's simply no substitute for the immediate responsiveness and the sound emanating from this technological masterpiece. We will be the only remaining naturally aspirated V8 in the segment. We are calling it the LT2, and its displacement remains 6.2 liters. But that's about all that is carryover about it. With the performance exhaust, it was recently SAE certified at 495 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque, making this the most powerful Corvette Stingray ever. For the first time, the Stingray comes with a standard, integrated, engine-mounted, dry sump loop system. Yeah. The system has three separate scavenging pumps and a very compact reservoir mounted on the front of the engine. The low-profile oil pan reduces mass and lets us mount the whole engine lower in the chassis than we've ever done before. The oil cooler has even more capacity. The bottom line is this new loop system has been absolutely bulletproof during our testing at tracks 
like VIR, the Nurburgring, and our own Milford Road course. That engine is paired to our first eight-speed dual-clutch transmission, or DCT. This features a very innovative electronic transmission range selector, a masterpiece of engineering art and design that will become a benchmark for the industry. The DCT provides lightning fast shifts and excellent power transfer. Simply put, the DCT shifts gears faster and better than any human can. It offers a spirited and connected feel of the manual and the premium driver driving comfort in an automatic. It truly feels like you're getting the best of both worlds. We've set the DCT up with a very low first gear to leverage our additional traction at the rear to get the car off the line very quickly. Gears two through six are closely spaced to keep the engine near the power peak on the track. Its tall seventh and eighth gears make for easy long distance cruising with low mechanical stress and excellent fuel economy. The LT2 engine and the DCT in combination with this new architecture make the new Stingray a very quick car. We are seeing zero to 60 times under three seconds. You heard that right. C51 Stingray under three seconds. That puts the Stingray in the company of some of the world's quickest cars and in our own history, only beaten by our 755 horsepower ZR1. Now, I've talked about a lot of changes, uh, but the truth is we have not changed the essence of Corvette. Corvette is all about freedom and the call of the open road. It is a designed in America, built in America, road-going private jet with first-class seating for two that will take you places you never thought you would go. In short, the Corvette is an attainable dream car. That has been true for 66 years, and the 2020 Stingray makes that truer than ever. We're welcoming the cars back to the stage. Driving these cars are actually two of our uh, team members, uh, our development drivers on my right, Alex McDonald. Thank you, Alex. And Michael Petrucci. And you'll see many, many, many of our Corvette team members here uh, to talk to you. Uh, at this I event. Like the they and the thousands of men and women at General Motors have spent countless hours delivering on this mission. And I personally want to thank them all. I'm so proud of this team. Before I invite Mark Royce back up to the stage, I'd like to thank him and the entire leadership team at General Motors for their support. Without them, this would not have been possible. Mark, the stage is yours. Thank you, Dad. Great to have you. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. And yes, um, we do test a lot of our safety equipment before we go into production, so that was a little bit of a wiper test there. So thanks, Dad, for that. Passed. Um, I'd like to, to really thank Taj. Um, we couldn't have done it without you as a, as a leadership position of that. I would also like to echo Taj's thanks to everyone involved in helping us launch our Corvette Moonshot. The whole team, including our two outstanding development engineers that you met here uh, tonight, they put their heart and soul into this. So thanks, you guys. Great, great job. I hope you like what you've seen so far, and I encourage you to have a closer look in the next few months. The 2020 Chevrolet Corvette is going where no Corvette has gone before, and we're all thrilled to ride along. This new Corvette, with its mid-engine configuration, has always been part of Corvette's destiny, and it's the Corvette version of a supercar that we've all wanted to see for so long. Corvette has always been about beautiful design, leading technology, amazing performance, at an unbelievable value. I know many of you are wondering where the new Corvette will be priced. A little bit. Yes. While we're not ready to announce all the pricing details, no, 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 hang on, hang on. What I can share with you tonight is this. When the 2020 Corvette Stingray goes on sale in the U.S., it will start at less than $60,000. That's insane. Oh, that's pretty, pretty great. What? 
Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, this is what Chevrolet and Corvette's all about, right? I mean, uh, this is what our engineers and our teams strive for. Where else can you get a supercar that goes zero to 60 yeah, in under less than three, three seconds, seconds for under 60,000? Nowhere. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, our customers can reserve their 2020 Stingray today. We've got a new system called New Reserve Now Program. That is live on Chevy.com. So Reserve Now program. It's a new program that Barry and our IT team and our vehicle sales service and marketing team has put together, and it's incredible. Or, of course, you can go to your preferred Chevrolet dealer. So um, that's a great, great thing, and it's, it's a configurator. And you can actually look at the car. You can see the car. You can price the car. And it's something that we haven't had before. So thanks for, for doing that to our whole team that has uh, done that. It's, it's fantastic. So um, thank you for, for doing that, Barry, and the team. It's, it's great. So we can do that live right now. But i got to tell you, we are just getting started with Corvette. If you are one of those who like and enjoy driving, you owe it to yourself to try this car. So a little bit of a preview of what's to come. I'd like to thank everybody for coming here and tuning in. And right now, I'd like to invite everybody up on stage and to the expos and displays that we have in this wonderful facility that has put to, been put together by our whole team. Uh, so please come up and take a look at the new C8 Corvette. Thank you. Guys, that is a wrap of um, you know what's happening for it. It's out, um, man, so many uh, questions I have. I'm excited about this. The, um, this new thing, something fierce, guys. So what are your thoughts? Who's going to get one? I'm super curious to, um, you know, put some options together and see what it's really going for. That car is something special and, um, kind of excited for it. Stay tuned, guys. If you guys like this, please smash that like button. Leave me a comment. Tell me what your most, um, or I guess tell me what you liked the most about um, the car itself. Super neat car. Of course, I'm in all the entire time just blown away. We've seen um, the prototype pictures, and it, it matched what's there, uh, but looks incredible. Super excited to, to check this car out, and I'm really curious. I, I didn't understand, is it going to be just the rear-wheel drive, or is the all-wheel drive going to be an option? Really excited to find out about this. Um, going to be an exciting call for all of us to um, check out together and learn. But guys, if you haven't um, hit the subscribe button, subscribe, follow for more updates. Until the next one, we'll see you then.